Hi everyone, welcome to the Desuckify Work Podcast. Please note, the video feed in this episode freezes up for about 30 seconds at the one hour, six minute and 30 second mark. The audio works just fine, so we kept the show going. Today, I'm speaking with Gary Ware, a strategic play consultant and the founder of Breakthrough Play. I gotta say, I have a lot of fun with the work I do, but it's hard not to get a little bit envious of what Gary is bringing into the world. Getting paid to play sounds like a pretty good gig, and Gary's infectious energy and enthusiasm makes it clear he's the perfect person for that job. We talk about the many ways that play can desuckify work during our conversation, how it can improve productivity without making you feel like you're improving productivity, how it can help us be more creative and collaborative, and how it can help us be the absolute best version of ourselves every day. And isn't that the whole point of this weird experience we call living? If you don't agree, you may change your mind after listening to Gary. So let's go. Okay, Gary Ware, welcome to the Desuckify Work podcast. So happy to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm so grateful that you're here. I, uh, I've had the opportunity to dig into a little bit of your work. I've had some some good folks you know, recommend that I look into your work and, and, and I really love it. Um, so before we, we dive in too much further, I'd love to give you a chance to talk a little bit about what you do in the world and, and how maybe it helps with this, this idea of desuckifying work for people. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I run a small company called Breakthrough Play, mm -hmm. where it's our mission to use modalities like applied improvisation mm -hmm. and other playful methods as a training tool. Um, just to help teams create um, a culture of belonging, um, help folks level up those uh, what I call essential skills, what other folks may call soft skills, mm. um, so that um, you know we can be our, the best version of ourselves and not have a place that sucks that yeah. we go to every day. It's so interesting because I uh, I like that distinction you made of, of essential skills skills versus soft skills, right? Because I think. A lot of us who are in this space of trying to make the world of work better, when you hear soft skills, it's like, stop, please. <laughs> they're not soft at all. They're, they're, they're actually what's most critical right now. Right. And, and, I, and I love the idea that play can take a big part in that. I think, I think it's intuitively some of us might know that or feel that, but people maybe don't understand how to bring it into work. They might think there's this big giant line that says, once you cross over it, you can't play anymore. You're on the work side now, right? So um, with all of that, you know, have you had that experience in the past that maybe led you here? I mean, did you have a, a, a sucky work experience where you were feeling some of that and recognized, I can change this? Yeah, so it started, really interesting story. So it didn't start sucky. Okay. It actually started, Act, uh, quite enjoyable. Uh, it nice. was a uh, so my background is in marketing and communications, oh, cool. um, and at the time I worked for this digital marketing agency. It was considered a startup um, at the time when I started. Uh, you know, when I joined the company, and uh, it was two thousand eight. Uh, mm -hmm. There were about twenty five employees. Uh, I, I was um, yeah employed twenty five twenty six, mm -hmm. and get this, it was two days before Halloween, um, and. The the hiring manager forgot to tell me that my first day was going to be a costume party, oh, <laughs> and and it wasn't on Halloween. Like, however, yeah. because we had employees that um, lived in the Bay Area and and elsewhere, this was the day when everyone was in town, and mm -hmm. so that was the day of the Halloween party. Mm -hmm. And and uh, you know, I'm I'm dressing, you know, trying to impress, and everyone, and I'm just sitting there in the lobby waiting for them to come, you know, come and get me and you know bring me in and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And every person I see has a costume on i'm like <laughs> and i'm the odd one out like yeah, because of that, the, everyone's the dressed one. up yeah. <laughs> and in the early days that's what it was like we we worked extremely hard mm -hmm. um you know we worked long hours because the work you know is a bit challenging however mm -hmm. the mindset's very playful um and you know we didn't take ourselves too seriously but what happened was as we grew um, and we got more quote unquote mature as an mm -hmm. agency, there was that whole thing of, oh, it's time for us to grow up. And, uh, you know, just like what you mentioned, mm -hmm. that line was drawn Yeah, very much. So like 
so we were uh, this company was a venture back company, um, and the VCs were you know, trying to position them to get acquired and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And they went through this rebranding, and we had all of these inspiring values. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is like pre, like you know, before companies really started to like take stock in what the values are and how can we step into it. It was just again, yeah. yay! But one of the values was fun. One of the values was fun. It was on this inspirational poster. And I remember like it was yesterday, they took that down off the wall. Oh, geez. (laughs) And replaced it with excellence. Now, don't get me wrong. I am one, you know, to deliver great work. Yeah. Uh, But there was something about that moment. Oh, yeah. Where from then on out, we still work just as hard. Mm -hmm. However, the, the fun and the enjoyment got sucked out. And yeah. that's when the burnout started mm-hmm. happening. So then, yes, it became a very sucky place to work. Yeah. <laughs> Just because, like, we, and, and again, it happened over small increments. So it wasn't mm-hmm. like it was like a flip the switch and it happened. Yeah. It was like we blinked six months, blink a year, blink two years, and we're like, what's going on? Yeah. What happened? Oh, geez. God, it's like, the symbolism of that whole thing, right? Of literally taking fun off the wall. I mean, usually companies are more subtle than that. Right. <laughs> usually, even if there is some cultural change happening, it's it's a little more, uh, you know, on the down low, so to speak. And suddenly you just have that wake up experience where you're like, what happened? But it's crazy that that, that it was literally physically demonstrated that we're going to start to take this out. And then, yeah, it probably took some time for the sort of cultural uh, mix and the muscles to kind of be retrained in a way where they were like, nope, smack that fun down, smack that fun down, smack that fun down until you wake up six months a year later and you're like, huh. Yeah. Fun and anymore. So to that point, they didn't say, hey, we're taking fun away. Yeah. They were a little bit more on the slide. They were saying, hey, we're consolidating our values. Because yeah. at the time, I think we had like 10. And uh, these are the ones that best represent what we're trying to achieve. Mm, okay. And, and and so like excellence was in there and mm-hmm. Six Sigma, uh, if uh, you're familiar with that. Mm-hmm. Like, again, near perfection. Sure. <laughs> and so all the things that we had that were the fun things, like the keg. Uh, Mm -hmm. the pinball table, like all of those things stop being used. Mm -hmm. We, you know, stop going out. And matter of fact, there's a Chuck E. Cheese around the corner from one of our offices. And Mm -hmm. we would go there at lunch. Pizza's delicious, believe it or not. Um, We would stop going out during lunchtime. There was more lunch at our desk. Mm -hmm. There was longer hours. Um, And again, the clients sometimes can be ruthless. Some of these companies that we work with Mm -hmm. um, spend you know, millions of dollars in advertising with us. And they believe because of that, they can do whatever they want. You know, they can, you know, and so nonetheless, yes, it was one of those things where in looking back, we're like, man, what happened? Yeah. Did that experience, is that what led you to what you're doing now? Did you sort of go, I need to find a way to bring this back and this is how I envision doing it? Yes and no. So okay. it was the catalyst. So mm-hmm. uh, along those lines, I I didn't know what I knew now, but I mm-hmm. knew that I wasn't necessarily happy. Yeah. But here's the thing. Just like what we said in the beginning, we as adults, we have this belief that, oh, you know, work isn't necessarily supposed to be fun. Hey, mm-hmm. you happen you happen to have a fun place. That's nice. Perk. But at the end yeah. of the day, you need to get your work done. Yeah. You can you can you can um, play when the work is done. The work is never done. Mm -hmm. And and so for me, I was all about, well, I guess this is just how it is. And Mm -hmm. I would go to these networking um, things. And it's funny because we would brag about how much we're working Mm -hmm. and how tired we are. Like it was a badge of honor. Mm -hmm. Um, But the thing that was the catalyst that woke me up, that snapped me out of this like sort of funk was I took an improv class. Ooh, okay. And the funny thing is, I didn't take it for enjoyment at first. I took it to optimize my career. Oh, wow. Because okay. I heard that if you take an improv class, it can make you a better speaker. Uh-huh. It was something that I knew in my career that, um, you know, it helps, you know, being mm-hmm. a great public speaker, speaking yeah. to clients, yada, yada, yada. So mm-hmm. I took it yeah. not <laughs> as a, hey, I need a fun outlet, a creative yeah. outlet to express creativity. 
Yeah. Um, I never take an improv class prior to that. And matter of fact, I was actually a little bit hesitant on doing it, a little bit nervous, like mm -hmm. what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but a mentor suggested it. And you know how that is. Like, you know, yeah. someone that you look up to say, hey, you should do that. And it seems yeah. weird. You do it anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, I step into this theater and there were people just like just like you and me. Just, hey, you know, we're, we're here to take this improv class. And mm -hmm. the cool thing is for two hours, completely present completely mm. focused on the task at hand, which were these silly games. <laughs> so silly. Um, and then um, I had the time of my life. I hadn't had that much fun without mm. being drunk <laughs> in a long time. Nice. And, and so, and funny that I mentioned that because I went home and my wife thought I was drunk because I was just so, I was so <laughs> excited about what just happened. Uh, you, so, but then the days, so then I go back to work mm -hmm. The work is still the same. The environment is still the same, but something in me shifted mm -hmm. that I was actually, I actually had something cool that I was looking forward to mm -hmm. this improv class on Monday nights. And then I was like, Oh, I need more of this. This is fun. And so I mm -hmm. took the next class and the mm -hmm. next class. Then because I was talking about it, people were curious. I would bring the games to my team Oh, cool! and we would play them. Um, you know, in between meetings or mm -hmm. before a meeting or Friday at 3 PM. And we, you know, started to get that groove back again. That felt mm. like more like the old days. Yeah. And again, it was before I knew all the neuroscience and the, you know, behind like what is really happening. Mm -hmm. It was just something fun to do. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's really cool because not only did you, you had this little moment of transformation where I was like, oh, I'm feeling my groove back. And I feel like I, I feel suddenly like you're looking forward to stuff again. Um, but you also had the opportunity to bring it to some of your, your teammates. And, and I think, you know, ultimately that feels like it, it connects to what you're doing now because it's the, it's the demonstration of it. It's the getting people in it, you know, having a chance to experience it, even just for a couple of minutes between meetings, that seems like it has some of that transformative power to suddenly make the things click for people. Is that right for you? Is that your experience? Yeah. 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 And so it was just a naive thing that I did. And then looking back, oh my gosh. Um, and I'm happy to dig, you know, dive into this, like mm -hmm. of some of the things that happened. But mm -hmm. yeah, it, it was, and it's contagious. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I mean, fun, fun is contagious. I mean, I think one of the things you, you mention in, in your website somewhere, I think you talk about this idea that we're wired for this. Yeah. Yep. So I think perhaps one of the reasons it might be contagious is like, you're kind of waking up those those neurons right it's like they're sitting there waiting to be activated and then they're damp they're dampened by all of the work shouldn't be fun you know this is work it's serious all that stuff um and then somebody shows up and is is being playful and is acting in a way where that your 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 fun neurons are suddenly peaked it's like of course you want to take part in that because that's part of who you are right um, so what, what do you think is the biggest block right now? Kind of, as you've talked to different people that's keeping people from embracing fun and play at work. Yeah. I, I think one of the biggest things is just our perception. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, kids have fun, you know, kids can play, mm -hmm. uh, but as adults, you know, we need to put our heads down. Um, mm -hmm. It's that whole, you know, one of the things that is very prominent in the U.S., not so mm -hmm. much elsewhere, is that Protestant work ethic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where you should be working um, and any sort of leisure should be, you know, sort of pushed aside. Mm -hmm. And like I said in the beginning, don't get me wrong. I'm all about hard work. I'm not trying yeah. to, like, shortcut mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. It's just that, especially some of the things that really sort of waking me up to, like, man, things need to be different is, um, you know, because the other belief is like, oh, just grind it out for 20 years and you can retire. Mm -hmm. um, well, who is going to, what company is giving out pensions still? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then also, if you can make it to retirement, are you even going to be able to enjoy it? Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing, I've experienced a number of people that I were very close to that, you know, or not here anymore. And mm -hmm. I was like, man, if I had that mindset of like, oh, I need to delay this mm -hmm. 
until you know time down the road what if i don't make it you know then it's yeah. all for not mhm yeah i mean i think i think that observation about that play is for kids is is yeah. is a really powerful belief even though um, obviously you don't agree with it i don't agree with it i've always i mean i think i actually worked in the I've worked in the world of advertising for a number of years and now I'm doing more coaching and other stuff. So similar kind of stuff. And that world is at least in the world of corporate America, I, I, I found there was at least some opportunity for fun and play and even the work itself. Um, but I will say on the flip side, there are a lot of times in that business where it's not fun and it's not playful. And, and I'm like, God, if it even gets to the place where the, the, the so-called fun, creative businesses are not even embracing fun. And I can't even imagine what it's like when, when you're in the, the serious work of whatever that is, if it's finance or, or something like that. Um, <laughs> and, and the fact is, 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 is from what the work you do and even just sort of anecdotally my own experience, being playful at work is work. Yes. Like that's the, the distinction that I think people need to hear and how, because, because that's how you get to being uh, more creative, you know, doing better things, being more collaborative, collaboration, all the, the wheels of collaboration are greased so much more when, when we're having fun. How do you, you touched on the word neuro, neuroscience before, so I'm thinking maybe you've got some data. Do you have stuff that you can provide to the skeptical CEO who's like, don't you dare bring fun into my workplace. What do, what do you say to that person? So one, let's take fun out of the equation uh, to the yeah. person that is, you know, at the end of the day, I want to meet people where they are. What mm -hmm. they want is folks to be productive. Yeah. They want to retain top talent. Mm -hmm. They want to attract top talent. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, they, they want you, you know, drive revenue, whatever the case may be. And, you mm -hmm. know, uh, increase the, the bottom line. Yeah. Well, guess what? When, if you think about, if you break down what play is, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. great distinction is that there is no separation between work and play. Um, mm -hmm. I believe as Robert Sutton Smith said, the opposite of work uh, isn't play, or excuse me, the opposite of play isn't work. The opposite of play is depression. Mm -hmm. We're suffering, we're suffering from a play deprivation uh, mm -hmm. situation here. So anyways, going back to, um, you know, these skeptics, wouldn't you want your people to do their best work? Mm -hmm. Well, when they are in a chronic state of stress, mm -hmm. what's happening in the brain is you're firing adrenaline, you're firing cortisol. That is not meant to be long term. Mm -hmm. It's meant to be a short burst to get you out of a situation yep. and then you know, move on. Well, when this is when you're in a chronic state of stress, you decrease your immune system, which is going to make you prone to being sick. Mm -hmm. Um this is going to also lead to burnout. Well, guess what? The anecdote is playfulness. Mm. Being in a state of playfulness is going to reduce cortisol and adrenaline, provide you with dopamine, which is for focus, endorphins, mm. focus and creativity, uh, serotonin and, and oxytocin, so mm. belonging and trust. Mm. Wouldn't you want your employees to have that? Wow. I think so. And then also when you're in a state of play, it's also flow. Mm. in a state of flow where time is just going by like that you're being challenged just enough mm -hmm. um and so i think we just need to redefine what it means play is a very complicated thing it's a spectrum yes on mm -hmm. one end of the play spectrum is goofing off and mischievous and, mm -hmm. and things of that nature yeah but also on the other end of the spectrum is deep work enjoying mm -hmm. your work so much intrinsically enjoying your work so much mm -hmm. that you want to do more of it yeah, God, I, I feel that, right? Because I've been in that. And it's interesting to be able to attach the word play or playfulness mm -hmm. on top of that. And I like the idea of a spectrum because I do think the first thing people hear when they hear play, playfulness, fun is the, the goofing off, the mischievous kind of stuff. And I'm a big fan of all that, by the way. But, yeah. but I think the idea that you can you can embrace that playfulness you know you want you can baby step someone in and going wouldn't it be great if people were in flow and they were able to really focus and really enjoy their work and here's a way to get people to that state and then you could sort of open the mind up even further from there because who doesn't want if i'm, if I'm running a company of course i want people to be 
digging into their work, loving their work, because that means the work is better. Um, do you find that when, when you start to open that, that door a little bit to the idea of of playfulness and what it can mean that people get curious and want to know more about it and then sort of open their eyes to the full spectrum uh sort of i think yeah. what really opens people's eyes is when they see it mm -hmm. when they see it in action yeah when they start to experience it because play when done correctly is a very it's very pleasurable it's mm -hmm. an enjoyment thing yep and like i said it's contagious so i mm -hmm. you know i've done you know workshops where again, we're working on some very heavy, serious topics, but we're doing it in a playful uh, manner. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had those, again, those skeptics in the back of the room, arms crossed, like, yeah. you know, what is this? Mm -hmm. Then they start to see everyone start to light up, mm -hmm. start to uh, be their authentic self. Because what is actually happening, and this is why it's so powerful, is that at the end of the day, we want people to be vulnerable. We mm -hmm. want people to... Um, have high levels of psychological safety, which means mm -hmm. that they feel comfortable being their authentic self without mm -hmm. fear of retaliation. We want all of those things and mm -hmm. we want people to have empathy and creativity. And the cool thing about play is play creates this container where um, we all have shared rules and agreements. Um, mm -hmm. And we know that, oh, because of the rules and agreements, I can sort of be playful uh, in that in that container and mm -hmm. if we make a mistake that's all part of it again mm -hmm. think about any sort of game you played when you made a mistake mm -hmm. um you didn't say up oh, i'm giving this up i'm never doing it again granted right. i do that in golf sometimes <laughs> but i still come back to it yeah but again that. it would be boring if there was no challenges if there's mm -hmm. no obstacles right and so in this play like environment we are creating that shared space and what is happening the neurons in our brains are literally being rewired in that moment mm. so that we start to see things from a different perspective we're starting to trust bob in accounting mm -hmm. uh bob in accounting is starting to trust us yeah and then that has a lasting effect outside of this little playful experience that we're doing so the mm. people in the back of the room the skeptics are like wow then they feel like the outlier yeah and then, yeah. and then they start to like sort of ease into it. So I, mm. I tell people, um, you know, one, I meet people where they are and I, I, I say, I, I totally get it. You know, mm -hmm. you, you may have seen play in other things and whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. um, and then I talk about the things that we talked about, uh, psychological safety, vulnerability, uh, trust, empathy, all those things. And mm -hmm. we start to get the nodding. And then I mm -hmm. say, just try it just yeah. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and let's see how, how it you know how it feels let's mm -hmm. see the difference let's check in with ourselves now let's do an activity mm -hmm. see how we feel yeah and more importantly uh when we go back to work let's see what happens mm. yeah well yeah i mean those are the two different things and i think it's interesting because I, I i can i can picture this room you're in right i can picture yeah. it. i can picture some of the folded arms and i can picture maybe the CEO or the leadership team kind of scanning and going, are people buying in or not? And then I can picture the, the room turning a little bit and then maybe even some of the forms come down and then the CEO goes, okay, okay, all right. I, I, I look good now because I brought something good in here. And then there's that transition to, okay, well, we had a fun hour, two hours, four hours, however long you, you set up this experience. And then how does it translate into the day to day, are you are you equipping people with like more exercises and things to do? Are you giving them kind of a, a worksheet that they can kind of go off of? How do you help them yeah. keep the momentum going? So one um, one of the good things is because they are uh, sort of filled with all the happy drugs. I mm -hmm. say, um, then you know they go back to work and they're like, wow, you know, you just mm -hmm. you're you're rejuvenated mm -hmm. rather than like you know we've been in those meetings where it's like, oh my god. <laughs> shoot me now and then now i have to go back to work i, I don't have the energy for this mm -hmm. so that's the first thing is that they actually have more energy mm -hmm. but two you're absolutely right uh because uh with these experiences that are create our low stakes environment we're working on uh some very complicated topics in a low stakes environment mm -hmm. um i want to take advantage of that and and have people reflect and and the brain is really good at connecting the dots mm -hmm. and getting them to see all right, how can you take this skill that we've been practicing in this playful environment and how can you take it and reflect it in your day-to-day -day and, and get people mm -hmm. to actually start to visualize that? Because again, yeah. the brain doesn't know the difference between dream and reality. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting. And so, so we can start to um, start to see it. It's like the was it's the reticular activating system. So it's like with Teslas. You know, the first time you see a Tesla, mm-hmm. then your brain knows what a Tesla is. Then you magically start to see them everywhere. Ah, got it. Yeah. So yeah. if we create an environment and we get people to start to imagine what will it be like, you know, once they go back, mm-hmm. then they'll start to see that. And as a result, they're going to be more likely to um, have that behavior mm-hmm. because they've experienced it in a low stakes environment. So when mm-hmm. the stakes are higher, they're going to be more likely to to um, adhere to that. Um, and so then we set it up. We like I get them to actually, you know, start to reflect and uh, have a debrief of like, what can we do differently? And then mm-hmm. I have teams actually say, all right, when we're in a meeting, um, you know, let's use this device that we played this game with um, mm-hmm. one quick example is this activity called um is called uh uh advance uh color events on motion uh where they're just telling a story and then someone has like the controls and they're curious about the story and at any moment they can say color and mm-hmm. the person has to like paint the picture of what's going on in that moment mm-hmm. advance means all right progress the story i've heard enough in emotion mm-hmm. how did you feel mm-hmm. and again those three words don't really have a lot of baggage to it if if you yeah. never really used it in other contexts. Mm-hmm. And because of that, teams have started like, oh, yeah, we're going to use that in a meeting. Mm-hmm. You know, when Bob in accounting is just droning on, hey, Bob, <laughs> advance. Oh, great. Cool. And he knows. And again, this is a code word, yeah, a playful code yeah. word. Yeah. Yeah. Just say, oh, yeah, yeah. You know what? Let me advance rather than. Hello, Bob. Seriously. Right. Or do nothing. Right. And because this person is in, in a place of power and it's just sucking all the energy out of the room. Or yeah. we have, um, you know, we have the, the person that is all data, no emotion. And we want to mm-hmm. like, how does this make you feel? Hey, you know, emotion. Oh, yeah. you know what? This was, a, you know, so I've had people take parts of games and say, we're going to use this in this context. And they all agree on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing. And then the third thing, you're absolutely right is how can we start to inject that into the culture, inject that into the day-to-day? And mm-hmm. that's you know where there are like little mini games. Um, mm-hmm. And the things that I like to do um, is what can we do in five minutes or less? Mm. Yeah. Make it easy for people, right? Make, make it easy. And then yeah. you're going to want to, you're going to want to do more. But I yeah. say, keep it simple. Um, there's a gentleman, his name is Sean Acor. Um, he is a positive psychology. Um, mm-hmm. uh, he focuses on positive psychology and he talks about activation energy. So if you mm-hmm. want to do more of something, you have to decrease the activation energy. So mm-hmm. it's more likely that you're going to do it. If you want to do less of something, you have to increase the activation energy, make it harder. Wow. That's so, really clever. Yeah. Again, with play and playfulness, it's not something that um, uh, even though we're wired for it, like we're atrophied. So mm-hmm. I want to make it simple for them. So yeah. I give them cues, like mm-hmm. after a long meeting, mm-hmm. instead of diving, go to your work, you know, diving into email, how about, um, you know, what can you do? Mm-hmm. And then they start to create like a, a playlist, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they create these recipes. Oh, after a long meeting, um, you know, as a team, we will uh, decompress by playing this five minute game because mm-hmm. it will make us more focused or rejuvenated. Mm-hmm. And then they, that is again, the recipe, they start to incorporate it. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I love all of it. I mean, there's so much in there, right? There's the, there's this like priming effect of like you show up and you play and your brain now starts to see other opportunities to play. Cause it was like, that was fun. I want to do more <laughs> of that. And then you sort of reinforce that with these very simple to activate tools of finish your meeting and do this during the meeting, do this, you know, advance or emotion or whatever kind of a thing. Um, and I, and I like that distinction from that, from that positive psychologist person, because I know for myself, and I think others can struggle with this, particularly if you work in the, the, the sort of idea business, sometimes shifting from thinking to doing yes. can be hard. And so I love that concept of like, make the, the first step of doing as easy as possible and you will do more of it and you will make that shift more often. And conversely, that other thing, if there's certain habits you don't like, make that first step real hard. You know, like put the cigarettes in, you know, in the, in, yeah, in the cupboard. You know, yeah. Like all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's really fascinating. Um, and, and I, I can see how it can work and I can start to feel how it can work. And so I think I actually, I'm going to ask you something. You tell me if you're up for it, but yeah, I kind of want to demonstrate it a little bit. Let's do it. So is there something 
one of these quick things that we can just go through and and show people what it looks and feels like because uh, yes i think that yes. could be kind of fun oh right, yeah this is fun this is an activity uh that i um i learned from a mentor of mine his name is anthony veniciality uh, <laughs> anthony veniciali Okay. Uh, from Freestyle Plus, um, it's a, a company that is uh, just like mine. You know, bringing mm -hmm. playfulness into the workplace. Uh, mm -hmm. They use improv and freestyle rap as modalities oh, wow. uh, to help uh, teams in all areas. Okay. Um, and the name of this game is called Quick, Quick, Quick. Okay. And it goes like this: um, the goal is to be fast. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I'll go first. I will just name a category to you, and mm -hmm. you have to name three things that would go in that category, and then we both. After you do it, say quick, quick, quick. Then you will okay. come to me, and then you will name a category for me, and I uh, and I have to say three things that would go in that category. Then we say quick, quick, quick. So we okay. can just do two rounds. So we okay. each get a chance to go twice. So I'll Great. go first. All right. Um, you know, name three things that you can't live without. Mm, my wife, my my cats, and my computer. Sadly. <laughs> Cool. And quick, then we say quick, 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 quick. quick. Okay. Awesome. Then give me a category. Um, what are three things that when you see them, you smile? Oh, three things. Uh, 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 my, my son, uh, sons, plural. I have two. Yeah. Um, uh, babies, of course. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and anything Disney. Awesome. Quick, quick, quick. 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 All right, cool. Category for you. Uh, what are three made up holidays? Oh God, I'm going to get a little uh, crap for this, but Valentine's Day. Um, <laughs> um, oh God, there's so many of them now because there's like, uh, this is a National Donut Day, uh, which by the way, I'm wearing a shirt with a cat on donuts. So I love donuts and um, uh, Boss's Day. Cool. Quick, quick, quick. 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 All right, you give me one last one. Um, what are your three favorite songs? I don't know if that's three favorite songs. Yeah. Uh, uh, Billy Jean, um, The Star Spangled Banner, um, and Thriller by Michael Jackson. Wow! Well, quick, quick, quick. <laughs> quick, 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 quick. Wow, that, awesome. is a, that is a nice little Michael Jackson sandwich around the Star Spangled Banner. Right. I love that. Exactly. And, and yeah. so that, that's that's the activity. Um, and so yeah. what we're doing here is a few things. One. Um, we are putting people in, in sticky situations is very low stakes where they mm -hmm. have to just say anything. Yeah. And I, I invite people, if they don't know something that will fit in that category or whatever, make it up, yeah. even say gibberish. It doesn't yeah. matter. The whole point is that we're conditioning ourselves to just take a bold move. Mm. And because, um, you know, again, no one made fun of anyone. We're just very supportive yeah. here. Now mm -hmm. we start to have, um, you know, we we were vulnerable. We realized, like, oh wow, this was this was fun. Yeah. Um, and then now, uh, now our level of psychological safety is going to increase. Um, mm -hmm. And then also, it's the priming effect. It's priming us to start to think um, more creatively and and mm -hmm. faster. Yeah, I can I can feel that literally. Like it it's it's in me. Like I. I actually have like a little bit of a buzz. Like you talked about earlier, like you came home from I think improv and your, your wife thought you were drunk or yeah. whatever. I, I have a little bit of that now. Like there's a giddiness yeah. that comes from dopamine. It. So, is dopamine that what it is? endorphins. It's just a dopamine so. rush. Yeah. I mean, I, I I I can see how if I was now going on to my next task at work, I would be entering that with a much different mindset than if I was coming out of the standard meeting, like you said, where it's just, you know, poor Bob from accounting, but we keep picking on him, but he's just yeah. droning on and on about all the, the numbers and never has a moment to really connect with us and, and allow us to embrace fun. So I, I really, first of all, just thanks for doing that because I appreciate it, but I, I hope people can feel a little bit of my energy coming through this and that gets them excited to yeah. to want to do this more. Um, one thing I'd love to come back to that you mentioned, you mentioned it for yourself and you mentioned it for, for a lot of people. And, th and that, that's this, this word burnout. Um, because I think a lot of people are feeling that right now. And, and I think there's probably a, a host of reasons, but what are you hearing when, when you're talking with people? What, what do you think are some of the primary drivers of burnout for people right now? One, not knowing how to say no. Mm. Uh, 
and and part of that is not having proper boundaries Mm -hmm. and like what you said earlier you know we're 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 tethered to computers (laughs) yeah we are uh we're we could be reached at a moment's notice yeah and it's funny because prior to like the invention of smartphones and laptops and stuff like that the people that could be uh, reached at a moment's notice were doctors Mm -hmm. and drug dealers (laughs) (laughs) yeah Everyone else, you know, you, you had to wait till the next day. Mm -hmm. Um, And I feel like that's where, like, we didn't take, we took this for granted. We didn't realize this Mm -hmm. is that how it was before. And, and maybe like our parents and grandparents time is that they went to work, worked very hard. You know, maybe they worked an eight hour day. Maybe they worked a 12 hour day, but the moment the day was over, Mm -hmm. they're done. They clock out. There's this transition from work to home. And, Mm -hmm they rarely brought that home with them. Yeah. So now you have a long period where you can rejuvenate. Mm -hmm. You can focus on leisure. You can, you know, connect with loved ones. Then you go back to work Mm -hmm. and there it is. Hey, it's waiting for you. You know, and then you dive into that. Mm -hmm. Um, We're having a hard time separating the two. Um, I was actually doing a a workshop this morning. I'll talk about burnout. And one of the common things is that most people know um, that they should shut things down, but they, they can't, they have can't. a hard time. Mm-hmm. And this is the interesting thing. We conditioned ourselves because it, it's very painful again, to think about like, Oh, checking email and stuff like that. However, somewhere unconsciously, we are getting pleasure yeah. from doing it. I was wondering about that because you mentioned the dopamine mm-hmm. thing before. And it's like, I was like, are we getting a dopamine hit every time we pick up the device again? And it sounds like we are. What? Oh, and I can break this down even further. Yeah, please do. Yeah, I'm curious so what's going on there. There was a study done with bonobos. Bonobos is a type of monkey. Mm-hmm. And so what they did with the bonobos is they um, they put them in this chair and then they taught them a sequence. And when they did the sequence co- correctly, they would get blackberry juice. Bonobos okay. love blackberries. Okay. And so that sweet, um, you know, tangy blackberry tangy. juice goes mm-hmm. into their mouth. They have like a little, like almost like one of those beer hats or whatever. And <laughs> it goes into their mouth <laughs> and they it. get a rush of dopamine. Mm-hmm. And so then they, they do it again. Dopamine, do it again. Mm-hmm. Dopamine. So then the researchers wanted to find out, all right, what will happen if we either don't give them uh, the blackberry juice when they, um, they do it correctly or it's watered down. So it's not mm-hmm. as potent. Yeah. Would they give up? Mm-hmm. Guess what happened? They worked harder. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so they they had so it's like when we go to check our email, we get a notification. We think, oh, this could be like unconsciously, we think this could be the email. Yeah. I don't know what that email is. It could be the email. But I know what, and what is it. About. It's just spam. Or yeah. it's you know, it's something, you know, Bob from accounting again asking where mm-hmm. your where your timesheets are. Exactly. And then we get another email. And then again, because we want to get that rush, mm-hmm. we work harder. And so going mm-hmm. back to the bonobos, at a certain point, they they uh, took their straps off so that the bonobos can go free if they wanted mm-hmm. to. Yeah. No, they, they sat down and they were doing the task. Oh my goodness. Gosh. It's so, I mean, it's not as shocking as I, I wish it was because I think we all know we're living some version of that reality, but it is sort of amazing to see it so cleanly uh, demonstrated in that experiment, but it's like, it's funny. You said we're waiting for the email and I'm like, I know what you mean, but I don't know what I mean really. Like, Mm -hmm. I know that I'm waiting for that. I don't know if it's like, you know, a million dollars. Like, I don't know if it's some magical opportunity. I don't know if it's just somebody who says you're a nice person and I like you. (laughs) Like, I don't know, some weird affirmation thing that you're looking for, but, but I feel like we all feel that like one of these is going to be the real deal email and oh god it's it's crazy that we're conditioned that way and i wonder can the work you're doing decondition us from that in some way yes yeah. uh, because what happens is um as i mentioned when you're in a playful state your the neurons in our brain start to rewire mm-hmm. so we can create environments where we're like oh wait a second i i have free thought Mm-hmm. You know, I, I am not sort of running through this program uh, yeah. because look at it like this. When we learned how to drive a car in the beginning, it was very challenging. We had to use 
all of our senses just to back up the driveway. I, I remember yeah. in high school, the thing that I got to do was back my mom's car out of the driveway. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Like she literally could just leave, but whatever. That was my thing. And I, yeah. it took a lot of effort. <laughs> I was not mm-hmm. good at it, but pretty soon, you know, of, of routine work over and over again, it gets like that. Now, mm-hmm. you know, not saying that it's something that we should do, but we can drive and probably think about the football score and maybe, yeah. you know, do other stuff. And we're, we're okay. you know, our brain is still going. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what happens is once we learn a task, once we start to master something, our brains, because our brain's number one job is to keep us alive. Mm-hmm. It doesn't use as much resources mm. because it's essentially like on autopilot. Yeah. Uh, we don't use as much cognitive uh, conscious resources to do it. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, putting on your pants. <laughs> yeah. Like if imagine if we had to consciously think about every action that we're like, it would just be yeah. overwhelming. Tedious. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what happened. That's what we did. We conditioned ourselves in the beginning of like, oh, email, check this. Mm-hmm. All right, boom. Mm-hmm. Now it's like, I, I don't, I'm just going to be completely vulnerable and honest. There'd be times I'm like, why am I on my phone? Like what mm-hmm. happened? Yeah. <laughs> that made me pick up. And I'm like, I don't even care don't about know. this. Right. And it's so like, crazy. again, yeah, it's an unconscious response. And so going mm. back to play, play gives us an opportunity to start to rewire those neurons and start mm. to create new um, pathways, new behaviors um, mm-hmm. that can replace it. Mm. So what, what might that be? Meaning if, if I, I have this condition and every seven minutes I pick up my phone because I'm bored or because I'm expecting the email, do, do am I, am I instead doing one of these activities that you talk about or is it something different? Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, uh, the, the recipe that I, that I told you, you know, after I, or before I when I, you know, this, the, mm-hmm. this came from researcher BJ Fogg out of Stanford. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, he has a thing called the fog behavior model and mm. it's BMAP behavior equals uh, motivation, ability, and um, uh, prompt. So okay. uh, our m- motivation, believe it or not, is very high to use these because mm. we get a hit of dopamine. Our yeah. ability to use them is, is very low. It doesn't take a lot of yeah. uh, you know ability. And then we get a prompt, a trigger, if you will. Mm-hmm. And then we, we do it. And so um, there's a, a curve. And uh, imagine, so the vertical is um, uh, the motivation, vertical axis is motivation, and the mm-hmm. horizontal is our ability. So mm-hmm. if if it is um, close uh, to the zero axis, as far as ability, it's going to take a lot of motivation to put us over the, what he calls the action line. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the more that we have ability, the less motivation that we need. Got and it. so if we want to rewire, this is where, again, the... Um, activation energy comes in one mm-hmm. we have to know um what our triggers are we mm-hmm. have to know what the behavior is yeah um and now we have to start to rewire that so mm-hmm. when we get the trigger or the prompt we need to have a new routine a new mm-hmm. pattern that we run mm-hmm. in its place and yeah. so like when i get attempted so one thing that i did is going for um uh, activation energy i took all of my and you can do this now with um the iPhones, at least you can take apps off of your, all your screens all together. So it's mm-hmm. like in the back, you have to right. search for it and stuff like that. So all mm-hmm. of like social media and stuff like that, boom, it's, it's hard for me to access. Okay. Um, and then now in its place, I have the Kindle app. Ah. Uh-huh. And so when I get the sensation to want to check social media and do the smiley scrolling or whatever, mm-hmm. I click the Kindle app and I read a page. Mm-hmm in a book, a page. Yeah. And so again, it's so simple. You mm-hmm. know, if I would have told myself, Oh, read for five minutes, like that might just be too over. Like, yeah. you know, because sometimes we just do it and we don't realize that we're doing it. So mm-hmm. I like a page, if that's yeah. too challenging, read a sentence. sentence. Yeah. And then the, this is the thing that is important. So after you do it, we need a, a boost of dopamine. So now we have to celebrate. Mm. Uh, and so we have to like intrinsically like acknowledge yourself. Like, Damn it. Yeah. You did this. Yeah. Yes. Virtual high five. Do the happy day. Whatever it is. <laughs> and in his book, um, Tiny Habits, BJ Fogg talked about um, by just having this uh, understanding the the BMAP, the Bog, uh, Fog Behavior Model, um, mm-hmm. and putting it in place, you're going to have about an eighty to ninety percent success rate because again, wow. you're you're creating new patterns. But mm-hmm. adding the reward, like the celebration at the end, That's increases key. it exponentially because mm-hmm. you get a rush of dopamine. Yeah. 
Yeah, God. It's and it seems silly. Think, it seems uh, very silly. It does seem super silly. And I, and I and I can hear my little inner skeptic going, does it really? But like, uh, I'm intrigued enough by it that I'm like, I want to go try it. And that's like, and I think probably people who listen to this will have that same thing of like, let me just see if that works. Um, but my sense is that like, there's something about like physically being in celebration mode that even if you're having to sort of force it, it's kind of like the thing that says, if you just stand in front of a mirror and smile, you'll actually be a little bit happier. It's yep. that same thing. And so it's you're embodying the physicality of celebration, whether it's giving yourself a high five, giving yourself a little hug or just going, yay. Like, even if that doesn't feel genuine in the moment, your body feels it as real and therefore the endorphins and the dopamine starts to calm. And I, I think I'm thinking about the, the person who is burnt out, right? And the yes. person who realizes that that they do have this this need to constantly stay connected um how simple what you're offering is for them right it's like just a little change and just this little activity that you can do or a little change in the way you you set up your phone or whatever it is um it's not solving burnout it's it's just rewiring your brain in little ways little bite-sized ways and then you probably wake up kind of like you woke up and you realized your job sucked after six months you wake up maybe three six months later and you're like hmm i'm, I'm feeling better about my job i'm feeling mm -hmm. lighter and then you look back and go oh it's because i'm no longer checking my phone i learned how to set boundaries because because i don't check my phone and when somebody says the next day you know i emailed you at 10 o'clock what happened and they, they go well you know i don't check my phone after 6 p.m or whatever they've said because now they can comfortably and honestly say that um i think that's a real gift you can give to somebody um i think you know one one thing you touched on earlier that i'd love to come back to because when i think about play and you mentioned there's a bit of a spectrum some people may have some not the skepticism but apprehension about i don't know i even how to be playful anymore whatever or what you know and you mentioned the idea that just being immersed in your work can be sort of a form of playfulness and i think I was reading on your site, it might've even been in a blog post, but there was something about that there are actual like styles or personalities of play. Can, can you dig into that a little more? Yes. Oh yeah. my gosh. Uh, I love this. So you're absolutely right. This came from uh, the work of um, Dr. Stuart Brown. Dr. Okay. Stuart Brown, uh, I'd say wrote the book on play <laughs> because mm, nice. that is essentially uh, what it's called. Um, yeah. And it's, and so how he got started, believe it or not, he was studying serial killers. Oh, good. And wow. he found that there was a strong link between people that became serial killers and uh, their childhood. And mm -hmm. more specifically, whether they played or not. Wow. Um, and uh, so anyways, so that's that got him interested in, in play. And, mm -hmm. and in his research, he uh, realized that there is not one right way to play. There's different uh, things that excite folks. And so he mm -hmm. came up with these uh, different, what are called, you know, play personalities. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll go through and I'll, and I'll talk about them. And I, um, as you're listening, I want you to think like, ooh, which one could, you know, could really jive with me and the things mm -hmm. that I'm doing? Because yeah. um, there's probably, I like to say for everyone, once you start to hear them, you start to realize, oh, play is different. Uh, mm -hmm. Because some of these you might not think is play, but again, yeah. it is a form of play. And so yeah. you might have a dominant play personality. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so, yeah, I want you to think about that. And then okay. what are the ones that are curious, you know, making you curious? Because mm -hmm. that is an opportunity to maybe mm -hmm. explore. So yeah. the first one is uh, the Joker. Uh, and okay. uh Again, for me, that was my dominant play personality growing mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Um, I'm the type that April Fool's Day, I rigged the whole house. Um, <laughs> and to this day, I'm 43 years old. Uh, my, um, my, uh, was it uh, 39 and um, uh, 35 year old siblings still on April 1st is waiting 
for something to happen. <laughs> uh, and I like it. And I, I, I and I will keep it that way. So yeah. uh, the Joker, um, their former play is uh, more mischievous, uh, goofy, mm-hmm. goofing off. Yes, you mm-hmm. like to do pranks. Maybe you like to uh, tell jokes um, mm-hmm. at work. Yep. Um, great. Um, mm-hmm. So that is again one when most people think of play, um, yeah. yeah, they they can easily think about the Joker. Okay. The next one um, is the competitor. Hmm. So the competitor, um, you know, their style of play is um, you know playing to win, and now hmm. they don't necessarily have to compete against others; mm-hmm. they can compete against themselves. Hmm. And the funny thing is. Um, my uh, good friend Kai and Kai, if you're listening to this, you you know this is you. Kai is so competitive. If yeah. you just basically say, "Hey, uh, I bet you you can't do this," oh, what? Mm-hmm. Again, talk about motivation. He yeah. can he can um, he can motivate himself uh, that way. Now, with all of these, again, there's you get overboard. You can go overboard, and and it becomes not play. Um, mm-hmm. But you like competitive games. You mm-hmm. play you play team sports. You play all these things. But mm-hmm. for you, that's play. Again, the yep. Joker and the competitor are the um, the the big ones mm-hmm. uh, that most people, when they think of play. But guess what? There are more. Okay. <laughs> the other one is the collector. Um, hmm. If the collector is um, your play personality, um, how it is for you is you like to collect things, whether mm-hmm. it's okay. memorabilia, whether mm-hmm. it's collecting stamps in your passport, whether mm-hmm. collecting experiences, um, mm-hmm. that you you can get into it and it's like again um it's play for you yeah um we have the explorer the explorer Mm -hmm. is exploring um you know through travel exploring through meditation exploring through psychological uh uh, psychotropic drugs whatever Mm -hmm. it is uh again um that is play for you uh then we have kinesthetic kinesthetics more about movement yes you might like um, you know, playing basketball or something like that, but it's like the movement and just being in mm. your body okay. uh, for you. Uh, that's play. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what is next? Oh, um, the creator, the artist. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is one of the ones where, um, where a lot of times people have this as a play personality mm-hmm. and then they're forced to sell their art uh, for them it wasn't about like creating it to sell. It was the art of actually, um, uh, you know, like of actually creating something mm-hmm. um, that yeah. was play for them. And then, then now they're forced to like sell it. Like then, then it's not play. Takes so away the fun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then the director, uh, this, this is my, my oldest son, uh, the director, uh, if that's your play personality, um, you like planning. You like being, um, you know, at the center of attention and picking everyone's roles. Okay. Um, okay. And that's play for you. Like again, when I play mm-hmm. with my son, he's going to set up the environment. He's like, All right, we're 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 playing Batman. All right, mm-hmm. I'm going to be Batman. You're going to be the Joker. This is exactly okay. you know how it's going to go. <laughs> Ready, go. Okay. Um, I like and that. and that's that's play. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, oh, the storyteller. Okay. Um, the storyteller, they can get lost in a good movie. They can get lost in a book. Mm. Uh, they tell stories. Mm-hmm. Um, that for them is play. And this one specifically, the storyteller, I was working with someone and uh, she was talking about like, I didn't really play growing up. Um, and granted, her environment wasn't really conducive to that. She grew up in England. Uh, it was during uh, World War II. Mm. Uh, there wasn't like her parents didn't have a lot of money. And yeah. so her her parents were very serious um, and so, yeah, it wasn't going outside playing. Um, mm-hmm. She had a little bit of the explore, but the thing when I brought it up, she lit up was mm-hmm. reading books. And yeah. that's what she would do. But this is the thing. She felt bad doing it. She would like sneak off oh, into a corner and she would have like this nonfiction book or this mm-hmm. fiction, 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 yeah, fiction, fiction, fantasy, book. Yeah. fiction book. She would just get lost in it. Mm. And, and she, again, felt, that's- she felt guilty because it was a, a not serious use of time. Uh, time. Almost? Yeah. Yeah. God. And that's what most people, that's why they have a challenge with play is they mm-hmm. think that, oh, this is a waste of my time. The mm-hmm. one thing that um talking about burnout and bringing it back to that, mm-hmm. when you are uh, allowing yourself to play, um, a few things are happening. One, your brain is still working. Mm-hmm. Your brain is still working on whatever challenges that you have. Matter yeah. of fact, that's how you can get into that state of uh, creativity faster mm-hmm. is allowing mm-hmm. yourself to daydream and stuff like that. However, yeah. we don't see it as productive. Whatever mm-hmm. we, we have to work on that. Um, yes. But think about any idea that 
that you've ever had. Did you have it trying to come up with that idea? Probably never, not. Never. No. Nope. <laughs> it was doing something else. It was being in. A, it, yeah. No, you're right. I mean, I think it's 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 kind of like they can either happen when you're doing something else that is routine. Like that's what people say. Like coming, you know, in the shower yeah. of ideas. Or I found that going for a walk is like a huge release of ideas sometimes. Or some people, it's going for a drive. Right. You no longer are paying yep. super attention to every little micro move. Your brain is unlocked, but yeah, like, um, and, and all these different versions of play, I can see how they, they can open your mind. And I, I, I was listening kind of how you talked and I, I, I was like, what's my dominant one and which ones are piquing my interest. I think, yeah, I think the Joker feels most common for me. I mean, I, I'm not necessarily the prankster, but I do love to be, um, cracking jokes and, you know, like, you know, working in an environment where there's that sort of almost playful ribbing kind of thing that yep. goes on. Like when you can get that kind of safety in a space where you can have that environment, um, I'm, I'm singing, I'm, I'm at yes. home. Um, I thought, you know, what's interesting is the, the storyteller, I'm not necessarily somebody who sits around and gathers everybody around and tells a big story, but I am a big reader. Um, I love, I love stories. Um, so I, I could connect to that one in an interesting way. And I think the Explorer is probably one that connected for me. Not so much that I, cause I think I read that and I first, I think travel, you know, yeah, most people like do. Yeah. I do like to travel, but exploring my mind and ideas and that kind of stuff is, is probably the sweet spot. And then I also, I love the director one because it's not me at all. But I know those people and I, I cherish those people, right? Because me too. like the stuff needs to happen, you know, like you're planning something and it's like, some people are just, they take the reins and it's like, all right, this, 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 and this, this is how it goes down. And it's like, oh, great. So now I just have to show up and have fun because you're, you're, you're really getting juice from being the person who controls it. I think, I think it's really fun. And I think that exercise must be really fun to do with anybody. So that yeah. they, can, they can find their way into this way of being um, without intimidation, right? Yes. Because I think at first it may feel a little bit intimidating. There might be that skepticism we talked about. There might be like, can I really bring this into the workplace kind of a thing? Or I don't know how to play kind of a thing. And it's, I'm like, oh, you know how to play. So look yep. at these eight ways of playing. Surely you do one of them. You probably do multiples. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Can I tell you a story? Yeah, please. So, so that was a situation that happened um, with someone I was working with during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Their default at the time they thought was the explorer. They love traveling. Mm -hmm. And during the pandemic, no travel. Mm -hmm. um, and so they were going through a big funk, a lot of overwork. So they were experiencing burnout. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Stuart Brown talks about this of doing what is called a play history. Start to think oh. about when you were younger, what were the ways that you played? Again, to start to figure out where they sort of match up. Mm -hmm. And and so I asked him, I said, how did you play growing up? What was something you know that you did just for the sake of doing it that you can just do for hours? Mm -hmm. And she thought about it for a bit. And then she she stopped and she said, but I'm not doing it. I was like, well, what is it? Tell me. She's like, I used to collect dolls. I had Barbies. Mm. I love playing with Barbies. Gary, I'm not going to go out and, I'm, and, and uh, go buy any. I'm a grown woman. I'm like, hey, <laughs> I'm not saying that you need to do that. Let's unpack that, though. What about mm -hmm. that was play? And yeah. what we found was, yes, there was the, the whole thing about collecting. So, mm -hmm. again, we have the collector pers uh, play personality. But mm -hmm. it was the nurturing aspect. Hmm. He loved being the mom. Yeah. She loved like nurturing. And so I said, what can you nurture mm -hmm. that you're curious about? And then she thought about it for a bit. And she's like, well, there's something, but I'm not really good at it. And it's so funny because as adults, we have this tendency, if we're not going to be amazing at it, yeah. Out of the out of the gate, we don't want to do it. I know. I know. <laughs> and so again, reducing activation energy, uh, being, I say, childlike, not childish. So childlike mm -hmm. is bringing curiosity, creativity, mm -hmm. and stuff to the mix. Yeah. And so she said, plants. She's mm -hmm. been curious about plants, but she had a plant before and it died. Yeah. And so we said, all right, let's explore what's a plant that you could nurture that is maybe easy to take care of. 
mm-hmm. you know, that it has a better chance of su- survival. Yeah. And we came um, uh, succulents. That yeah. was what we landed on. Mm-hmm. And so she started with like a little three succulents, three succulents, mm-hmm. but magical thing happened. Mm-hmm. So that became her thing. Mm-hmm. And then she got very curious about how to take care of them because she didn't want to kill it. So she started to dive into like, all right, what do they need as far as environment? And mm-hmm. then three succulents turned into eight succulents. And then yeah. she learned about propagating them uh, mm-hmm. to take parts of it off and then yeah. you can create new ones and then blending them. Oh, wow. And it turned into about a hundred different plants all over. Her oh, house. wow. <laughs> and more joy. Yeah, more productivity, uh, mm-hmm. more life satisfaction. Because what happened was, she had something to look forward to. Yeah. So she wasn't overworking. So she was mm-hmm. filling that void with, oh, instead of like checking email stuff like that, I'm going to replace it with learning about these plants. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. And so, and because she was filled with joy, she found herself being more productive mm-hmm. because she's not thinking about like the negativity about work. Um. Yeah. And that was a new again form of play. She could do that for hours. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can relate to that in a way because I, I'm definitely not a collector, but I'm, I'm pretty obsessed with cats and I'm pretty obsessed with Snoopy. These are my two things. You can maybe see a little bit of a Snoopy poster yep. in the background there. I've got my cat shirt on. Um, and so like I get cat t-shirts, I have Snoopy paraphernalia, like, and it's not, I don't think of it as a collection in the way like a stamp collection is. It's more just like it emotionally lights me up yeah and and then i do you can get a little obsessed about it and you can get like excited about it and yeah like instead of picking up the phone and endlessly scrolling if i pick up the phone at all it's because i'm researching how to do the thing find more of that or in in this person's case how to propagate more succulents or create those blended succulents or whatever and suddenly that spills over into to your whole life and your work and the balance of all those things and it's just with such a simple starting point of like what did you like to do as a kid what brought you joy as a kid can suddenly turn into this wonderful expression that that has effects throughout your whole life and that's that's amazing i mean i think i like your your point about us feeling like we have to be good at it i think it's a shame like we lose it it because as a kid you don't really have that i mean some kids may depending on their upbringing but As a kid, it's more just like curiosity bumps me into the next thing and then I try it. And so I think part of what I what I think about when I hear all this wonderful work you're doing is I I, I love that it's happening in the corporate environment, but are people bringing it back into the schools so that we're not turning kids from these wonderful play machines into these sort of automatons of fear and um, you know, self-doubt, which is what we then show then shows up at age 22 in the workplace instead of this person who's like no i'm i'm an artist and i'm a collector and i'm these things and i'm going to bring that to work and not only am i going to bring it for me but it's going to rub off on you and then you're going to bring the director back into work and we're going to set up this really cool thing and it's just going to have this create this wonderful contagious effect that you talked about so i i don't know have you have you experienced Lord, this sort of the world of education at all, or oh, are you kind of leaving that to other folks? Uh, so I haven't. I, if you want to uh, learn about how their education is all messed up, Peter Gray. Peter Gray is the Peter person uh, okay. to look at. He he has amazing TED talk that talks about um, you know how um, <laughs> that uh, the education system is ripping uh, ripping uh, the creativity and curiosity right out of us. Because if you mm-hmm. think about it. It is conditioning us. Um, and I don't know how. So I heard this from um, uh, Seth Godin. Seth okay. Godin did a TED talk uh, mm-hmm. about um, and he had mentioned that public schools came about because kids were taking jobs away from adults. Oh, wow. <laughs> and and <laughs> and so we needed something to do. So like, oh, send them to school. Mm. But not only send them to school, we need to teach them how to comply so that they can work in factories. Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. that's where standardized testing came from. Of mm-hmm. This is the standardized way of doing it. If you think about tests, there's a right or wrong. Mm-hmm. And we are conditioned to think in that terms, right yep. and wrong. And mm-hmm. it messes us up because yeah. when we're 
where we're in the real world as an adult, there are so many possibilities, but because we are so laser focused on finding the one possible answer, we mm. miss all the other opportunities. And you yeah. bring up a good point about kids are super intelligent in that area. NASA did a study where with five-year-olds, um, a creativity test of, of divergent thinking. So thinking outside the box, mm -hmm. these five-year-olds, 95% of them had genius levels of creativity. Wow. By the time they were 18, only 3%. Oh, jeez. So it is beaten out of us. And you're right. Uh, and then and then the workforce is calling this, you know, out of us. But we don't know how to access it because mm -hmm. we've been conditioned to think one way. So uh, yeah. that's a whole nother. Yeah, podcast absolutely. Episode, but but I, you're absolutely right. It, it is starting in our education system. And I wish I knew what to do. I, I wish there were some things that I can do to help because it is scary uh you know uh what's going on uh but i i feel like we're starting to make some inroads there I said, mm -hmm. like i said peter gray is is someone who's really championing for um yeah. for things to be different yeah i mean i'll definitely check him out and i hope everyone listening or watching does too because i i, I can picture some of what you're doing being being really interesting in the the later years of school and just helping people to kind of and not only does it help them as adults but it will help them in the moment as kids i mean the teenage years are just awful and if you give people a chance to move through that more nicely more more uh in a, in a more joyful way that would be a gift too yes. um i think you know you've you've covered so many wonderful things here and i and i really you know i think i just keep coming back to this this idea that um what you do is is what work should be it's not it's not some layer on top of it it's not some band-aid it's not some like do the workshop uh and and then forget about it and and go back it's just like we really need to reimagine the whole thing and put it through this lens of bringing out our playfulness and our different play personalities um and not just because we will all be happier and more, more joyful which by the way should be at least part of the goal because that's what we're here for but but it actually has all those effects you talked about that are borne out by neuroscience you know the fact that it improves productivity and it improves collaboration and it improves uh problem solving skills and all these wonderful benefits so that even if you're the deepest skeptic um why wouldn't you try this so i i think you're doing uh like some of the most important work i think right now out here and i and i and I, I'd love to get your take on where you think like we are. Are you optimistic that we can we can get this done in a way where the world really makes a big shift in this direction? Um, I, I, I am very hopeful. Mm -hmm. I will put it this way is that we have a big challenge. And, and yeah. I'll use a metaphor that I learned from um, my mentor, Anthony Viniziali, that I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. um, Think of uh, a lasagna. It's it's our work structure. It's it's everything. So the bottom layer, the bottom crust of the lasagna pan is mm -hmm. the Protestant work ethic. It's capitalism. It's all these things that have been formed way before us that mm -hmm. are stuck to the to the pan. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's like so formed. And Anthony brings up a good point that um, in order to really change it, we'll have to throw out the pan. We can't do that. I wish we can. <laughs> We can't. Yeah. We have layer no. and layer and layer. But yeah. what we can see is the cheese. Oh, am I? Right. We'll go. Go here. What we can see is the cheese. Uh, mm -hmm. The cheese is the top layer. It's our current mm -hmm. state of being. And there's so many things that we need to dig up. But what mm -hmm. the cool thing is, if we want to affect the other layers, we have to affect the top layer. And Anthony said, like, if you have a lasagna and you're like, all right, we want to try to heat the other layers. We can use like steam and, and other methods to mm -hmm. like heat up the cheese, which will affect the other things. And that's mm -hmm. what play is. Mm -hmm. Play is that steam that is going to start to shift things mm -hmm. that hopefully it can get us to uh, think of things from a different perspective. Yeah. So that we are more open to making a shift because to be mm -hmm. honest, like to, to really affect things in a rapid way, we would have to throw everything out and that would just cause a big ruckus. Yeah. <laughs> throw everything out and, <laughs> and re, re like re redo it. And that would be great. Mm -hmm. Completely open to that. But how likely is that? Let's, let's be yeah. realistic. So that's mm -hmm. why I love this concept of, of bringing playful methods into mm -hmm. organizations because it starts to create a ripple effect. Yeah. Where 
yeah. know, one person's affected. And mm-hmm. then like we talked about contagion happens. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's part of the beauty. And I can almost picture the steam going through the lasagna and activating right. different elements and you can start to feel that. And, you know, one of the things I, I like to ask folks before, before we sign off is, and you're starting to get there is if you could kind of ma- wave the magic wand and have all of this in the world, what, what does that look like? This sort of desuckified workplace through the yes. lens of play, what are, what are we seeing when, when that world shows up? Yeah, I, I think it starts with the foundation of, um, and I've mentioned multiple times, psychological safety. We create mm-hmm. an environment where people can bring their best selves to work because mm-hmm. um, you even said it, you know, how can we go from like knowing it to doing it? Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, a coach, a uh, friend of mine always said the environment always wins. So mm-hmm. if we do not change the environment, you know, yeah. we can know all the stuff but mm-hmm. it's going to be the same. Yeah. Uh, and so this that. is where psychological safety comes. Uh, so mm-hmm. if I had a magic wand, yes, we would have high levels of psychological safety so mm-hmm. that we can bring our true selves to work, our director selves, our collector selves, our kinesthetic mm-hmm. selves. And then we can have like empathy for each other. Mm-hmm. Um, we can bring creativity. We can solve problems in a playful way and mm-hmm. realize that there isn't a separation between work and play. It's all one and the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God, I, I love that. And I, I can, I can feel it. So like, I, I know what you're doing is getting us closer to it. I'm hoping to, to sort of amplify what you're doing and, and contribute to it however I can, because I, I love it. And I think, you know, the, the idea that work and play are one and the same, I think is a great mindset to just get people to just start thinking. We can just sort of get people to experience it, recognize it, and then be in it. I think they'll start to realize, oh, it is kind of the same thing. And, you know, the, the, the last thing I, I, I will, will ask you, uh, well, I'll ask you where people can find you. But before that, one of the playful things I like to do is I play with sound effects. My intro and outro of the podcast have like goofy cat sounds and other stuff. And um, I'm always asking or curious if, if, if you, I'm curious if you have any sound effects that you like to make when you're in a playful mode or you're with your kids or you're telling stories. Um, that we can add to our desuckified sound effect library. Yes. And so this is just it, it with my mouth or whatever. Yeah. However you can make it. All right, cool. Uh, what I like to do, uh, and, and I, I play around with this a lot is mm-hmm. like the whole concept of beatboxing. And so a sound mm-hmm. effect that I really like is like this. Nice. Yeah, it's tricky. It doesn't come through the mic super great. Um, I think it's, I, I think you know what it is. I think it's because our mics have all this uh, noise reduction. It does. Uh, all right, all right. Let me try it one more time. Let me try it one more time. I hit a, set yeah. a, a setting on Zoom. Maybe it'll work this time. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> There it was. Oh my gosh, that was wonderful. Uh, that will probably show up in the intro or outro or both yes! to the episode. Uh, so we're going to make that work. Um, I love it. it. That's just so captures the spirit of what you're all about, Gary. And before we go, where can people find you so they can start to dig into all this good work that you're doing? Yeah. If, if you found this interesting and curious and want to explore this, uh, go to my website, breakthroughplay.com. I'm mm-hmm. on all the social medias at Gary Ware. <laughs> Yeah. Say hi. <laughs> Love to hear from you. Awesome. I hope people do. And I'll also put all that in the show notes and all that good stuff. So it'll make it super easy. Uh, kind of like you said, make it make it super bite-sized so people will do the thing. Um, we'll make it as easy as possible. Cause uh I know I'm I'm coming away from this conversation with a good, a good playful buzz. Um, we'll see if Same. my wife thinks I'm drunk. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> I I really appreciate it, Gary. Um uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what you do next. Awesome. Appreciate you as well, TJ. Uh, super excited. This was so much fun. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, Gary. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to the Desuckify Work Podcast. And thanks to Gary for being an energizing and entertaining guest. You can follow Gary on LinkedIn and on Instagram at Gary Ware. And learn more about his work at BreakthroughPlay.com. You should also check out his book, Playful Rebellion. You can download the first chapter on his site. Speaking of sites, if you like some of what you've heard from me and would like to know more, you should check out my site, thepuddingfactory.net. 
And if you'd like to chat, I'll drop a link in the show notes to help you get something scheduled. Keep on playing, everyone. Bye. <laughs>